Hey, thanks for joining us again here at St. Helena Women's Health Center at uh, Dr. John Kirk's blog. I guess it's my blog. Oh, well, you can edit that part out. The, um, the topic today is a short one. We're going to talk about self-breast exams. We'll talk about breast cancer just briefly and how it all relates. Well, in a sense, the breast is uh, a fatty organ, a tissue that is very productive, uh, reproductive, I should say, in helping babies grow. It produces milk and it helps them grow and receive immunoglobulins to help keep them from getting sick earlier in their life and getting the right type of nutrition. So there's a great reason for the breasts. However, they can cause problems. One of the problems, a very common problem, are pain and cysts, um, masses that are found inside the breast. Many times those masses, in fact most of the time, they're not going to be a cancer but they're very scary. Anytime you feel something that's not normal anywhere in your body, it's scary, but in particular in the breasts. Well, what we've done over the years are various studies and various ways to try to catch those risks, those breast cancers, if you will, that are real problems in the breast, significant issues that need to be caught as early as possible, because if we catch most things early, we can usually solve the problem by either removing the, the tumor, if it's a cancer, or actually uh, treating it uh, through some other fashion if it's not a cancer. But at least finding out early is the key. We've come up with a few things to do that. One of them is, of course, the mammogram. You've been receiving mammograms. In general, we start mammograms after the age of 40. There's a debate. Do you start at 40? Do you start at 35? Do you start at 50? Um, there's been some nuances in the recent years, but we still think most of the organizations that supervise this process and give recommendations, like the American Cancer Society or the Preventative Task Force, the U.S. Preventative Task Force, or American College of Obstetrics and Gynecology, um, we all have varying types of recommendations. They're mostly similar, but there are some nuances. But in general, a, a mammogram should be performed after the age of 40, and before the age of 75. So between 40 and 75, anywhere from every other year to every year, a mammogram should be performed. Classically, we talk about them every year, perhaps in the first decade at 40 to 50. Every other year is reasonable. There was even a study recently that had come out uh, that started some of this, this fervor uh, that suggested we shouldn't even start until 50. But clearly when we do that, we miss cancers and people die. But is it cost effective is always the question. And of course it's hard if it's you that has the problem to talk about money because that's not what it's about. It's about solving your problems. But we want to catch the disease early. We want to catch that breast cancer as early as possible. And the fascinating thing about breast cancer is it grows really slowly in most cases. It starts as a single cell. And over years and years and years, in fact as many as 10 years, it grows to be one centimeter in size. It takes that many, that long of a period of time, that many duplications of this cell to actually become palpable or touchable, fit, able to be felt inside the breast from an exam. And those are the other things that we do to try to find them, is breast exams. We have two different breast exams. There's the clinical breast exam, which is what we do. When you come into our offices at St. Lean Women's Healthcare, we will examine your breasts on an annual basis to check for masses, bumps, lumps, something that's changed from the last time that we checked you and that may or may not be concerning. But if we feel something, we want to find out more and we would do more studies. That's a clinical breast exam. One of the big things and one of the topics that I wanted to really address today is the self-breast exam. We have talked about self-breast exams for years and years and years. Go back to, to high school. Depends on our, all of our ages, but we were even talked. We were taught in our high schools that a self-breast exam, particularly for women, but believe it or not, men get breast cancer too, and there's no reason we shouldn't conceivably think about doing a self-breast exam. But we've been talking about it for years and years and years. We've been talking about it as though it's good, as though it's the right thing to do, and well. That's not clear. There's a lot of controversy about whether self-breast exams actually make sense. Um, I teach my patients that if you do a breast exam, self-breast exam, great, that's fantastic. You're in touch with yourself, literally and figuratively, and you're, you're actually looking for something that you can have an integral part in solving if you catch it early. That's fantastic. The challenge with self-breast exams is not that it's hard to teach. We have little shower cards, we have little 
think the editions in magazines, you'll see it a lot of places. But the fact that, or the question that, does it work? Do self-breast exams actually help pick up cancer earlier than if you didn't do them at all? And sadly, it doesn't seem like it's true. The data isn't there. We've done probably four or five fairly large studies throughout the world in terms of the world's literature. One of the largest studies ever performed was done in China. It was done with, I believe, close to 260,000 women. It was very well, well studied, very well controlled in the sense of a quality research study. Half the women had mammograms where appropriate, clinical breast exams, and self-breast exams. And they were taught specifically a type of self-breast exam that's reproducible that each person could do. So half of them did those three things. And half of them did just the clinical breast exams and the mammograms as indicated. And the surprising findings were that women who did self-breast exams, on average, caught their breast cancers later than women who didn't do self-breast exams. That's pretty disappointing. It doesn't even make sense when you think about it. But look at it this way. One of the, it was almost risky to do a self-breast exam in that study, in part because it was a study. Uh, there was a series of protocols so that if a woman feeling a, a mass had um, that sensation of a mass during her self-breast exam, the protocol was to then, of course, go in and have a clinical breast exam, even if it wasn't time for the annual clinical breast exam, but focused to be diagnostic, to look for the mass, see if the doctor or the provider could feel that same mass. If they could, well then the protocol would lead to removing that mass, cutting it out, getting rid of it, somehow assessing that it wasn't a cancerous process. In that study, women had 900%, nine times more surgery than women who didn't do cell breast exams. So clearly, it was more risky to those women because they didn't pick up the cancer earlier. It wasn't statistically different, but they didn't pick it up earlier. They had nine times more surgery, nine times more risk, nine times more exposure, and certainly pain, not to mention the expense of nine times more surgery. The bottom line is it didn't show that it helped, and no study has ever shown that breast, self breast exams helps. So I'm not telling you not to do self breast exam. I think it's a reasonable thing. And like I said to my patients, as I said earlier, if you do it, great, keep going, don't worry. Um, and bring it, bring to our attention what you feel, and we'll work together to use prudence to solve the problem when and if we find it. But if you don't do it, most certainly don't feel bad. Don't feel guilty, don't worry, because you're probably not causing yourself any grief. I want you to have a blessed day today and every day, and thanks for joining us again at the St. Helena Women's Health Center microblog.